Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you're all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe. While we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome to Geek Enders. The topic is no Hello. longer pre-show. I hecked up here. Mm. Intro. I, you know. Bam. You're fine. It's a whatever. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. Uh, hello, everybody. I hope you're having an amazing day. Our our guest today is the lovely Rubber Ross. Hey guys. Claps, 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 claps. Who I don't I, know where he is on the screen, so I'm gonna point everywhere. Under you. Under you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like I, I feel like I haven't Ross. I feel like I haven't talked to you in years. Has it God, been it's been years? a while, yeah. I mean, you. The last time I saw you in person, I went. It was me and Gui went to your place, and I think Alex was still living in California, mm. right? And when, then we oh, had we, we had we the hot, hot pot, pot together. Yes, yeah. I think you're and right. And then um, we. Oh my God, let me think. My favorite story. Uh -huh. about seeing you and yeah. it just came back into my mind oh my god we were going to the <laughs> um the convention i was i was tabling with you at that convention Do yes you one? yes yeah, and, yeah yeah and i woke up i woke up a little early and just i didn't know you guys were in the next room and i let out the worst morning fart like <laughs> loudest morning fart and sam and you just look at your child your baby and are like oh my god <laughs> Oh, oh my god! I forgot about you, that. You 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 thought your you thought your, your your baby ripped the loudest fart ever, but it was actually me in the next room over, oh and you didn't god. know I was awake yet. I yes, wow, that unlocked a memory. Yeah, I completely I remember about that. that. Oh my gosh, yeah. Because she was she was new. She was like a, a brand yeah, new she human. Was, she, was, she was a tiny little baby at the time, and you thought <laughs> that came we were out like, of your kid. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> uh, I forgot about that until right now. Um, freshly unboxed human. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm, yeah, that was fun. And then um Yeah, we did the hot pot, uh, and then you moved to the UK. And I was yeah. supposed to see you guys when I was performing in the UK, but we didn't end up linking up. Dude, that is tale as old as time. I've had so yeah. many friends come through here and be like, we should meet up. And then just yeah. for one reason or another, I think it's hard because a lot of times mm -hmm. um, if, if people are coming out here, they probably have plans during the, like the day and the time that they're free is at night. But that's sort yeah. of the opposite yeah. for me where like for, I, can, you, I can make stuff a, happen yeah. during the day, but at night, like I need mm -hmm. to be home normally, you know, yeah. so... <laughs> Uh, and I, in June, I'm going to be like actually kind of close to you, but just too far. Oh. I, I'm going to I'm going to Dublin. Oh, um, fun. Yeah, my uh, my my dad and my sister are meeting up with the rest of my family in Dublin. So I'm going to be spending my uh, my birthday there, which should be pretty nice. That's awesome. That'll be so um, cool. Yeah, I love Dublin. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, When's the last yeah. time you went? Uh, tour actually, yeah. Um, so that would have been to uh, 2022, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love Dublin, I'm a big, big fan of Dublin. Mm. Um, spent a lot of time there growing up, and um, <clears throat> my family uh owns a uh 
that used to be my grandfather's is like long past now but it's it's a um like a giant like farmland they own with like a house on it and this place mm-hmm. called garan um so uh i haven't been there since i was a little kid and in fact i didn't even know we still own the property i didn't even know it was still in the family but apparently we're, we're for the first time since i was I have like 11 years old i'm gonna get to go back to that farmland and hang out it's oh, cool. a, a place where i uh fell into a bush of nettles discovered what nettles were <laughs> um not cool i don't like nettles no they're yeah. they're very nice to eat um i've heard that nettle tea and stuff yeah yeah. Yeah. They grow all over the place on our property. So I try to like, I try to grab them and do things with them, but uh, sometimes it's just not worth it. Cause yeah, they sting <laughs> like a bitch. <laughs> They're what, so bad. Oh yeah. Hold on. Huh. What would you describe the eating of a nettle to be like? You can use them in place of spinach in pretty much anything. Um, what? Really? Yeah. I bulk out pesto with it. So I'll use like half basil, half nettles and it basically That's tastes crazy. the same um they've got like a really they've got a lot of good stuff in them it's just that they suck because they hurt you <laughs> so <laughs> so eat it yeah you just so put it in your mouth eat it yeah. exactly because yeah. it before it can hurt you basically the second it gets heated up uh the little the little spines on it that hurt you like evaporate mm-hmm. <laughs> basically like they're they're non-functional anymore so which is why <laughs> Uh, people who harvest them without gloves on will claim like if you just pinch as hard as you can when you grab it, you'll be fine because they're like yeah, small yeah. enough, they're brittle enough that you should be able to just crush them. <laughs> but, yeah, I uh, heard there's like a technique to how you pick them up or something that yeah, like it, it, the the like little needles can't actually get you. It's yeah. it's weird. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, fun. fun. Anywho. Anywho. Hot anywho. Me. Early morning botany. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. How are you, How Jesse? Are you <laughs> I'm fine. I'm. I. I, I had the revelation that uh, I realized I'm. I have so little to do that every time I've been in the UK, I've hung out with you, and I've realized now that's because I was doing nothing of value. My days are entirely free. That's not entirely. You were like, true. "Do you want to hang out?" And I was like, "Yo, car." That I just the days I, the days that you've been over here for conventions we have not been able to sync up. Mm-hmm. Or okay, that's true. Conventions that or was like, like three days or like that was like I was know. in and out. That was like a yoop yoop. Yeah, you know? yeah. If you're when here I'm there for, for like a, long a trip, time. yeah, absolutely. What can I say? I'm doing. I, I do. I do a whole lot of nothing. And then I make it seem like I'm busy all the time. That's that's the scam. That's the scam. You got to get people thinking you're like so overworked. And then you just sit alone in a room and are like, guess I'll stream today, I suppose. And that's how you do it. That's the scam. There you go. I'm very good at it. Look, just as a heads up, next time you come out here, Jesse, I will Mm -hmm. make you come to visit my family. Because every single time you're in town, I get bombarded sure. with messages like, oh my gosh, did Jesse see Clark? I'm like, no. 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 Jesse is terrified Clark's of children. Clark's a mean girl. I'm terrified to be that. Ne- Clark is a mean girl. <laughs> How old is Clark? Clark, Clark I don't is want not that. a mean Clark's girl. Gonna, Clark's going to be, she's going to be like, oh my God. <laughs> Look at that loser. And I'm going to have to deal with that. Whoa. And I don't want to get in a fight with your kid. I don't want to like fight your kid, okay? Like, I don't want that between us. I don't want you to fight my kid either. She will lose. <laughs> wait, so wait. Huh. Like, how, 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 old, how old is Clark now? She'll be six in April. Mean girl. Her friends are named like Boofy and <laughs> uh, like Lord Jasper Esquire. Yeah. They're all assholes. Mm-hmm. Every one of them. Yeah. A bunch of 16, six year old punks <laughs> just out there on the streets, flipping cars, mm-hmm. cockney that's rhyming. It. That's it. Oh, yeah. they're the worst. That's yeah. it. That's exactly rhyming. what's happening. Yeah. 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 Uh, she's learning how to use the sewing machine. That's, oh. That's kind of similar to vandalism. Yeah. 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 What do you think she, what do you think she can sew? Uh, anarchy signs, probably. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Hooligan slogans on the back of like uh, football jerseys. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This kid's trouble. 
She's got a little jean jacket. Who knows what she's going to cover that thing with? <laughs> does she really have a little jean jacket? Yeah, she does. It's like rainbow. a little tiny cute yeah. six year old jean jacket. That's amazing. <laughs> it's like pink and blue. It's very cute. <laughs> it's cute. That is cute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. All right. I'll go to your wacky farm and see your animals Thank you. and your family. Yeah, we have yeah, sheep all right. now. You we have pigs. Yeah, I heard about we have this. You've been like, you have, wait, you got, you, you're on a farm. Yeah. I'm so jealous. Yeah. You <laughs> I wish should, I was on a you farm. You should come visit. Yeah, we have so I many animals. To. Wait, so so is it like Stardew Valley kind of like get a, Do you have like vegetables and stuff? Uh, yeah, we have an area that's all like for for like growing uh flowers mm -hmm. and vegetables and things, and then uh we have a big field area that's sectioned off for the animals. Um, all I do recently is complain about Crumble the goose because he was oh, so sweet. Oh, goose are mean. He was so sweet, and now he's reached his like axe body spray mm -hmm. teenage era, and he's just yep. mean, and he wants everyone mm -hmm. to know what a big what a big boy he is, and it drives That's me my dog. crazy. <clears throat> That's my, your dog. My, my dog. My dog is, uh, he's now in his like, like teen era, and um, he's, he's teething, and holy shit, he's does he want to let you know he's teething? Yeah. Um, so he's like about, oh my God, he'd be about five months now. Um, oh, baby. He, he's, yeah, he's, he's a sight hound. So he's something called a, a, a silken wind sprite, which is like a, um, a it's supposed a to be like a dog. long haired, yeah, like a long haired uh, whippet, which is like the medium sized what? greyhound. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he's like really long. Um, and uh, he's similar breed to uh, I don't know. Is if it the mean chat. dog with the long nose? No. Okay. So yeah, close. Um, so uh, do, you, do you guys know Jimmy? Jimmy here. Do you know who I'm talking about? I don't think so. Okay, another another streamer YouTuber. Um, he's he's in Texas. He has a uh, he has a similar breed called a Silken Wind Hound, which is the same breed. But it's it's like you know how they have um, golden golden doodles. They're golden retrievers crossed with yes. doodles. Yeah, the, sure, these yeah. are uh, a, a wind sprite is a, is a selkie crossed with a, a gray a, a, a whippet. A wind hound is a berzoi, the one you're talking about, crossed with a a a, a greyhound. So they're similar I breeds. See that. And he oh. has the one that has the super long nose, and it's so good. And they got they have a built in uh, overbite, so that their teeth are like come around the, it's so oh, cute baby but um yeah no ochi is his name uh, named after uh, the dog from pikmin um he he is i could show you but uh he is a fucking hurricane and unfortunately i came into my office and you see this little yellow mark here yeah what is that that is cat vomit and oh. if he sees that he's gonna gobble that up <laughs> no don't say that <laughs> so so i don't want to bring him in here right now yeah <laughs> this is behind the scenes nasty <laughs> i god you know, i hope that this know, was like do you want to see something so your dog the, what happened vomit is, no yeah so this is this is i have three cats as well so get this okay my cat i have a cat a siamese cat who's allergic to cat food like biscuits so he has to have hypo hypoallergenic cat food right like special cat food. so does but my siamese cat yes is this a yes. thing so <laughs> He's discovered that he loves dog food. So whenever he, he, he chews into the dog food bag, which makes him throw up, which is what he's been doing. Mm. I'm going to show you the culprit. He's right here. Okay. This is why I don't have pets. You, the two of you. Look, this, is the, this is my cat, Kipper, who's oh, been eating all the dog food. A baby. And throwing up on the couch. Look Isn't at that, that right, baby. Kipper? Kippy. Aww. You're going to meow? You're going you're gonna to meow to be released? Oh, she may very well behave. I also have another cat. She's like, uh, no. Like, I, I, we have my other It's like cat, that hello, Tina. hello, my baby, hello, my honey frog. Yeah. My other cat, Tina, is hello, around baby. somewhere. Hello. You know what I mean. She is an angel. She was a, she's a cat I found in my garden. She was just a stray that just showed up one day, and I started feeding her, and now she lives with us. She's really sweet, but I don't know where she is right now. Aw. Cutest pootis. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I just realized how many figurines mm -hmm. you have on that wall behind you. Oh, do you want to see? Yeah. Yeah, this is my, drag this is my Dragon Ball wall uh, because it's a stream set. It's tax deductible. Don't tell anyone. Okay. Um, yeah. Yep, yep, okay. yep. Smart. Ooh, ooh, the Smart. zoom. Ooh, the zoom. Ooh, look.
Look at all of them. Dang, we got some Vegetas. Yep. We so got good. some uh, Gohans. Dang, look at all them Bulmies. Oh my God. Is that Piccolo? So if you look down at the bottom there, that's so it's, it's all done in, in Dragon Ball arcs. This one here is my non canonical wall. Okay. And this, this is. <laughs> This this these three silver ones here are from the the movie Metal Cooler yep. where Frieza's brother can clone himself and he's a robot. So I bought three of them because I thought if he can clone himself, I should have three of them. That makes at sense. At least three. Yeah, yeah. You gotta which have is, triples. Which which sucks because uh, it, it was an expensive figure because it's chrome. So yeah, um, I have a lot of these, and it's it's kind of like my my little. It's it's like you know when you're an old man, you have a train set. This kind of this that's yeah. for this for me. I love um, it. Yeah, I would love that one. Can I can I zoom do you in ever, more? Do you ever think about uh, how you remember how like grandparents had those little porcelain figures, the like uh, yes. whatever those were called, the porcelain I've babies? That. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be <clears throat> us with all the crap that we've collected. And oh yeah. Oh, there's yeah. gonna be some kid fifty years from now who's going through it all, just like, what the shit is this? <laughs> what? Is- yeah, man, they were someone, weird. Into the dump asked, it goes. Someone asked if this is an investment. Uh, well, anything that's like uh, Comic Con exclusive, I keep in box, mm. unless I'm and like unless it's hard to get duplicates of. Like, for instance, um, there is a figure down there that is uh, it's it's Gohan and Goku uh, doing the the Kamehameha, like Ghost Goku behind Gohan doing mm. Ghost Kamehameha. You get a Ghost Goku figure. It's hard to that's see, but it's cool. like it's that's down. Very cool. Uh, see the little beam oh, yeah. clash right here. Yeah. So right there, there's a ghost Goku. Hold on, get out of the way. And that figure, if you look behind that display, there's a second one that's in box <laughs> gotcha. because I knew that that one was gonna go for. You gotta get doubles. Yeah. yeah. And one you can see I have my life can... together because the cat vomit's also in shot. <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> Priorities. I just woke up. I didn't know about the cat vomit until I turned on this camera. I was like, Bro, oh, great. Don't even worry I've about actually it. Been, I've actually been like rec- streaming or recording something. And then midway through the recording, I lean and there's no cat vomit. And I lean away and then there's cat vomit. It's awesome. It's love a pleasant cats. surprise. Baby. I love it's cats. It's humanizing. Do you want to know okay. how many mugs mm-hmm. are in my office that need to get cleaned? Will that make you feel better? Uh, I have some of your mugs. <gasps> yeah, I still have some. Jesse, did you keep any? Oh y- yeah. <laughs> Sweats. I have your I have your Murloc so one. <gasps> yeah. I, mm-hmm, That's I still awesome. have it. I definitely didn't uh, give them give them away. Why would I do that? Why would I? Actually, I do have one mug that you bought me. That's the tentacle. The mug. The tentacle mug. I still have that. Yeah. I love that mug. Um, okay, here. I have... What? All right. There is... Hold on. What? There is a wide variety of when you turn your back away from the camera reveals happening. Ross has cat vomit. What is your shirt? Um, what is that thing behind you? Do you remember that game Small Saga? That I kept being like, this game is so good. It's such a such a good game. Like probably the best like um, turn based adventure RPG I've played mm-hmm. in a long time. Blah blah blah. Um, the top Steam review on it just says LGBTQ rap per- rap berserk. LGBT rap berserk. And so my mod made this for me. <laughs> oh wow! It's it's. It's the characters. It says LGBT rap berserk. No, I, I mean, like, I, it, well explained. I just, you moved and it appeared and I was like, there's got to be a story about that. <laughs> I put it there because, so we um, and we can talk about this a little bit, but uh, I played a bunch of demos this week because it was Next Fest. Mm-hmm. And one of the demos was called Trash of the Titans. And it's a, um, it's a turn-based tactics game where you play a bunch of rodents and it's the same sort of thing where one of them is like a berserker and one of them's a mage and one of them's a rogue and I was like it's LGBT rap berserk. So, you know that the uh 
the demo for the game that we definitely didn't think up but now exists went the Pacific Drive demo. Yes. Have you played it? It's on my laptop. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it right now on my desktop. I played it literally today. Um, is it good? Yeah, it's it's really cool. It's a it's a pretty short demo. Well, I guess not short. I shouldn't say that. Uh, the you can see what the gameplay loop is, and mm -hmm. you only do the the gameplay loop once before the demo's over. And so you have that feeling of like, wait, but because it's a it's like a mm -hmm. roguelite sort of mm -hmm. thing. So sure. you you know when you come back to the the shop or whatever you're able to make improvements to your car and things so um you have that feeling mentally of like wait but i've i've built this now or i have this now i want to go back out you know and then it's like but the demo's done play the game when it comes out i think it comes out end of this month so oh man um but yeah, yeah. it's very good the 22nd mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. man there's too much yeah, I have mm, a list. Mm, mm. I have a list over here of everything coming out over the next three months, and I'm like, <sighs> <laughs> "Did uh, right, cool. did any of you guys play any of the demos no. that have been out this week?" No, I haven't played a single thing. I, I I'm I'm so behind on games. That's okay. Like, it's I, I I tried to start Alan 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 Wake too, mm. and I was like, "Oh, it's not a musical." But it is. Oh, but I, Ross. I, 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 I got, I was like, I, 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 I love the, the Herald of Darkness song so much. And I was like, I need to play this game. And then I got in and I was just like, when's the musical start? How far, like, how much did you play? Like, how, uh, like, uh, scary naked man in a morgue. <laughs> Great. So the literal <laughs> opening of the game, <laughs> the first hour. <laughs> yeah, um, I played it before I went on tour. It's yeah, it's less of a musical and more of like playing a Netflix show where okay. every every episode ends with its own song. So you Ooh. get like your own theme per episode. It's Ooh. really well done. Wait, yeah. so if I keep playing, there is a musical number. Oh, there's there's multiple music. I don't want to spoil it. There's okay. multiple music numbers, but also like, yeah, the end of every right. episode is like its own you get the credits and you get like a new song oh, wow. that has to do with what you just did. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, so yeah. Cause I was kind of hoping to find like, maybe I'd turn on the game and be like Les Mis, you know, like I wasn't sure what I was getting into. I just knew, <laughs> I just knew that um, I've been working on uh, what do you call it? The, um, we were, me and my buddies been working on a lethal company mod, which allows Ooh. you to put in like custom emotes. Um, and one of the emotes we, 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 we put in my friend, um, Bob, uh, animated in was uh the 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 herald of darkness dance like a sure. like a really really nice hand animated one and um uh i just loved the song and i got i added it to my spotify and then on tour i was listening to it a lot but um yeah yeah i um i want to play the game like i i i and i saw the the live performance of the of the the song at the at the game awards i was there mm. where I, where i nearly ruined the game awards by accident you know about that no um tell the story i i literally made a youtube short about this um but basically uh twitch twitch invited uh me like they had a bunch of seats uh, like they they had their own private seating area so they, uh, they they invited me point crow and a bunch of others and um i showed up there i was the first one there and um i thought when they said it was going to be like special seating it was going to be like the front row or something but um it ended up being this like private mezzanine so i i i they told me where to go and I went up there. And when I arrived there in the mezzanine, like, you know, like where Abraham Lincoln kind of was shot, that kind of shit. Sure. Um, yeah. I walk in and then there's just a plastic table, a, a guy with a bunch of like, you know, those like, like those laptops, they look like they'd bring into a war zone. Like they, they're all like cased up and shit. And then yes. wires everywhere. And I'm like, huh? And I like, no one's there. So I just like w try to walk to my seat, nearly trip on one of the wires. Cause it's like so close to my seat. I sit down. And this, and then I, I'm just confused. Like, what, what? This is the. It's like not that fancy. There's. It's like a fucking like base. Like a, like a. I don't know what to describe it. Like it's like a control station. And I was like, this has got to be some like production shit. And then eventually, I'm sitting down. This guy comes over. He's like, Hey, uh, I don't think you're supposed to be sitting here. And I'm like, No, this is my ticket. It says I'm supposed to be sitting here. And he's like, Oh. It's like, Well, why are you here? I'm like, Well, Twitch invited me. This is the Twitch area. And he goes, Oh. Oh, this is going to be a problem. Uh, <laughs> turns out that was the control station for the entire stream. 
Oh. Um, and it turns out the wire I nearly tripped on uh, controlled every single crane camera for the entire event. So if I had tripped on that wire, um, all the cameras for the entire event would have shut off. <laughs> Like midstream, like oh, this is, I am not making this up. God. I have pictures to prove it. And I put it in the short and literally they, uh, they, they ended up taping it down, but not with like gaffer tape. Cause I have friends, you know, I'm on tour. I showed my friends on tour who were production. They didn't use gaffer tape. They use like duct tape. So it's like very poorly kept down. Cause I don't think they were expecting people to be in the vicinity. Right. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm hanging out there and whatnot. And then we're watching the show and then, uh, uh, I'm with a bunch of other Twitch staff, and Dan Clancy comes over, and he's like, "Hey, uh, I think we're gonna have to move." So, like, we all get up and move to like another mezzanine area because, like, they were just like, "We can't have people." Like, I tweeted about it. People are like, "Pull the plug, pull the <laughs> no. plug." I'm like, no, I'm not doing that, dude. I'm gonna, I, I mean, uh, yeah. So I was like, "Pull the plug in game of the game of the year." I was like, "I could never do that to Baldur's Gate 3. I love it too much." Um, <laughs> But yeah, dude, um, I, I I don't think it was totally their fault because like, I, I think it was more so uh, the the venue because they- it's, It they sounds gave, like the venue they sold them, seats they, they were gave them, to. Yeah, they gave them a location to manage the, str the, the stream that happened to also be a booked mezzanine. Mm -hmm. So like, that's the venue's fault. Um, yeah, so that that's kind of crazy. Um, so that happened. Uh, I think yeah. you had probably the best experience, though. Like, yeah. uh, being on the floor, like, down, mm -hmm. not one of the most insane things I've ever experienced. Like, it's yeah. not, uh, yeah, award shows, I'd rather just watch at home now. I, I, once was enough. <laughs> like, yeah. I, constantly I've never moving been. and shifting. Mm -mm. Yep, yep. That was my first time ever going. Probably, pro probably my last. I think it's, I'd probably prefer to be home streaming it. And just kind of hanging out with chat and stuff, but yeah. like um, I couldn't see anything the entire time. Cameras were doing this yeah. directly in yeah. front of me, and I was like, I, I could, I could have done something about that. <laughs> you really, you could have saved my <laughs> entire day. I could, I could have got rid of them. I was just like, Jesse can't see. <laughs> Unplug. Just move them. I would have been like, get rid of them. <laughs> Who needs them? Thanks, dude. <laughs> oh, so funny. Oh. Oh um, yeah, I was, I, I'm glad I went because I, I I saw the 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 um, Alan Wake Two dance and I was like, wait, what? What is this? Alan Wake Two got dancing and music and stuff. Uh. <laughs> um, and yeah, then you played, um, did you play Control? Are you in that universe? Do you know those things? No. Oh, Control's oh, great. You should play Control. No. I haven't played Alan Wake, but Control's fantastic. What is that? I don't know anything about it's it. It's like SCP. Um, Ooh, but. Uh, you play like a a capable, cool lady working in a mm -hmm. facility that's like kind of an SCP esque facility, and you can find like Ooh. all kinds of like lore documents and stuff, and you're dealing with like weird shit happening. It's very oh, that sounds cool. cool. I it's like I um, love the FC, SCP stuff. Yeah, it's like a, a imagine if Remedy, as a game company, said, "Okay, mm -hmm. we got all these properties. We're gonna make a new one that explains it all." So they okay. made a bunch of weird games, like Alan Wake is a weird property, and they have all these, mm -hmm. like, like e even, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, like, even Max Payne is technically included, but, like, all their what? games, and they made, like, I love Max control Payne. over all of it, and controls, like, here's gonna, here's our e explainer for the entire universe we've created, Wait, and imagine there's, the like, a person. Universe? Yep. Wait, Max Payne is in the same universe as... What? Well, here, all right, all right. <laughs> technically, technically, Max Payne, Quant Max Payne, and Quantum Break because they're not legally owned by Remedy. They are alternate universes, uh, but they're still, okay. Okay. but they're still under the umbrella. In that, there's explainers, at, like there's characters who are like, yeah, I remember one time I was in this other place, but you were there though, like that kind of stuff. Oh, the universe sort of shit. Okay. Yeah. Like, I, I played Max Payne one. Like I loved that game as a kid. I was that game fucking rules. Like I, yeah. I, I, there was, um, I was so upset. Cause at the time I was, when I was young, I was so obsessed with like the matrix and stuff. And I was obsessed with, um, cool Oh my time. God, there was, yeah. Did you ever play the half-life one mod, the specialists? Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. It was great. It was so cool, but it had like a bullet time system for multiplayer. So like, I think if you were within vicinity of like a, someone going bullet time, you would also go bullet time. Mm -hmm. And that was so cool. Uh, I don't I've never remember. I don't 
know if there's any way I well maybe the specialist is still around. I I, I would love to try that again. I wonder yeah. what that looks like. I, I'm always impressed yeah. going back to old games and either being like, mm -hmm. wow, this is very old, or realizing that even though it's 20 years old, it still looks really good. And I'm always like, wow, I'm so impressed. It's an experience yeah. either way. There's a Dragon Ball Half-Life 1 mod that's like still in production and still has not released. Um, there was like an early version of it. It was called Earth Special Forces. And like, if you go there like every other year, they'll have like an update, like, hey, we're not dead. I know it's been 20 years, but like, here's what it looks like now. And they've like re basically built new, sh new modern shit into the Half-Life 1 engine. So they have like, like destructible environments and like really nice water. It no longer looks like half -Li like Half-Life 1 anymore. I was going to say, if it's been yeah. that long, does it even yeah, feel ESF like a mod still around, anymore? Yeah. Google e Earth Special Forces or ESF force es esforces.com and you'll you'll look at when the last update was it's like 2021 2022 it's like they're still working on it because all volunteers so it's like super slow um yeah oh man i love the half-life one modding scene dude yeah but that was there's that's sort of that time period where most of the communities that existed around games were were modding Right, like I was mm. hardcore into when they had um, the Tie Fighter game and the X Wing game, and then X Wing versus Tie Fighter. There was a huge yeah. modding scene for that, where I would sit there and make like my own. Here's my own Tie Fighter adventure campaign, and I honestly didn't have to do much because some dude somewhere created a program yeah. that you just put in all the information mm. and it popped it out the other side. And th like those early two thousands, that was where it was yeah, at. That's dude. everyone was. Civilization, one of my favorite Civ games was uh, mm -hmm. Fall from Heaven 2, which mm -hmm. is literally they just put fantasy characters in Civilization. That's and so it's, cool. It was awesome. And there was, you know, because it's Civ, there's 50 different factions. And so they just made 50 different fantasy factions. And all the art is just straight up stolen from Magic the Gathering. Like, it's just <laughs> Magic the Gathering art. But it's great. There's another, I'm trying to look it up. Uh uh oh yeah, yeah yeah okay this is another one i really liked i think it was called natural selection did you ever play that one they tried to like bring it back but it didn't kind of come back with any sort of uh but basically it was a hybrid uh uh how do i put this like one player on the human team was like, yes! like R rts and like had to put that like build units and stuff and the other team played aliens and the more they mm -hmm. killed uh, they could evolve into bigger aliens. And the goal of the human team was to destroy the alien hive. And this, the, 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 um, the, the goal of the alien team was to destroy the con command station for the, 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 um, the humans. So it was like, command, yeah, commander plus FPS. It was so cool. I played so much of that shit. I used to go to land centers just to play this game. Um, yeah, and they made, they made like a they made one. real version. Yeah, they did. And I don't think it took off. I don't think people were super into it because I never heard anyone talk about it. I played it once, but like sure. the original was so cool. So fucking cool. I love that game. It's kind of how like I feel with everything that came out of the Warcraft, Starcraft mod scene. Where in those oh. games, I played them all the time, but... Wait, people you know. are saying it's from the Subnautica guys made it. Wait, seriously? Is that did true? They? Natural Selection was made by the Subnautica guys Whoa, in the same universe. Whoa, it totally universe. was. Unknown World. Natural Selection. What? Yeah. yeah, look at that. Good for them. What the fuck? That's crazy. Yeah, I'm That's looking at it right now. crazy. I didn't know that. Okay, the good for them. Like, they made a... That was, like, one of my favorite Half-Life mods ever. And I didn't... Know, you know, I still haven't played Subnautica. And you know why? Hmm. I, have a, I have a crippling fear of the open ocean. Oh, same. That is Big Jesse. Same. I, I, I can't Sorry, do I didn't mean it. to it's say like, that like it's, it's a happy fun thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like a height and those nightmares growing up where you you uh, like you're in the middle of the open ocean with nothing. No, no, no salvation. It's the scariest shit. So the ocean so wait, is terrifying. So you're I'm trying to pinpoint your fear because not to use it against you, but because I want to see if it's my own fear. When mm. you when you're doing oceany things, is it the vastness of the ocean? Or it, for me, it is literally the plane. I've, I've pinpointed this. You know, like there's, yeah. here's reality. And yep. there's a plane of water. And then if I jump in, I'm suddenly somewhere else. And there could be anything down there, dude. That terrifies me. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. 
it's the vastness, how deep and unexplored it is, the predators, uh, the um, just the it's it's scary that we know more about space than the our own ocean at this point. Like, oh yeah, like the horrors that could be below there are so scary to me. Um, but I don't know, man. I. I, I yeah. All right. Let me let me tell you my experience then playing this game because I feel like we'll have mm -hmm. the same experience. When you first start playing, your ship crashes. So you're stranded in the middle of the water. Your ship crashes, and it's like, well, good thing you're in the shoals, so it's fine. All I got to do is jump in the water. So immediately, step one is exit your ship, look at the water, and make the choice to jump in, which is already too much. It took me, I'm going to say, 10 minutes to even like work up the courage to jump in fake water. And I was like, okay, I got this jumped in. And it's like this beautiful reef and there's all these fish and there's like goofy looking fish and happy fish. And mm -hmm. the entire time I was like, this is all a ruse. This is some bullshit. You know, they're yeah. around the corner. There's, yeah. there's like sharks, like what up waiting hot. Cause I'm like, it's a video game. Of course you're going to start you nice, but like over there and that darker water, that's how I die. So I didn't leave that area until <laughs> chat yelled at me. Mm -hmm. I was like, yep. look at this beautiful yep. one. And then once you do that, it's all hell. It's the worst thing I've it. ever experienced. No. Uh, did you, did do you not try Dave leave. the Diver? I, I have not played Dave the Diver yet. No. I played a little That's bit cute. of that. That was a little bit more manageable because it's like. Pixels? You can, you can, you can see around yourself a little bit. So I don't sure, feel sure. like I get something's going to sneak up behind me. Um, I like that game. That game was good. I, I have to beat it, but I, I was really enjoying that game. Um, yeah, it's like yeah, it's got a good like collection. It, yeah, the gameplay cycle is awesome. Yeah, it's really good. It's really really good. Um, yeah, big fan, big fan. Um, uh, the very yeah. first VR thing that I ever did was that like shark demo, the deep sea VR thing about. that has I, like three I, different levels I, in it. Yep. Yeah, yep. I made my 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 parents do that when they visited the Grumps office way back when because we had. Is the, that the um, one where the whale comes up and like? Yes, yes, yes. So yes. Yeah. I I didn't know what it was going to be like, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the first level is like basically nothing going on, but the second one is you're on a ledge, and mm -hmm. a giant whale swims by you, and I nearly it's had a, a panic ship. attack. <laughs> I know the one you're talking I about. Yeah, freaked um, the fuck out, and I'm not yep, scared yep. of water. <laughs> By all yeah, that's dude, child's play. That's it's, nothing. It's, and there's the deep sea one the where you get the angler one, fish I, and stuff. Yeah, yeah I yep. put the headset on yep. and immediately took it off and was like, "Sam, you do uh, it." And Sam was like, the, "Okay," and was totally fine. <laughs> I I got to try that really early on because around that time, uh, Grumps was kind of dipping their toes into uh, game development. Mm -hmm. So we were registered as like, you know, a game studio, even though like Dream Daddy and all that stuff hadn't come out yet. Um, so we got the early version of uh, of, of the uh, Vive um, and like it wasn't like publicly accessible yet. Like so you it was it was kind of like so at the best that they had at the time was that like Kickstarter Oculus. You remember the one like the yes. really like shitty one. Yeah. yeah. So um, the Meiji motion tech. So going from that to trying a Vive with that as a, one of the demos, I was like, oh my God, this is going to change the world. This is crazy. Yeah. And my parents came to visit the office. They were visiting from Australia and I got them both in and they just couldn't believe it. And I, it was, I, I, I've, I've, now we've got the fucking Apple whatever uh, vision. And I'm just like, I have not tried one yet. And I'm just like, it's people walking around with them on their heads in public is so silly. Yeah. Um, but I will say, when I tried VR for the first time, I did say that. I said, eventually what VR will be, will be compact, small, sty once it's compact, small, stylish to wear, can interface with your phone for extra processing power and battery or whatever. Um, you're going to probably see them as like an accessory that everybody would wear or out and It'll about. It'll be more like, augmented reality than augmented reality. reality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's weird that the thing we have now are these ski goggles mm -hmm. when 
I don't know, 2012, there was Google Glass, which was just glass. It sucked, though. It sucked. Google Glass I, did. Sure. Oh, no, it. it definitely Someone sucked. Someone brought it to Maker. I remember. I can't remember who it was, but one of the talents at Maker brought it to uh, this, 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 the, the studio, and I got to try it, and I was like, this is fucking dog shit. No wonder it didn't get released. <laughs> it's the it same thing terrible. with the Xbox ones. Uh, were you? Yeah. At, there was an E3 where it was like, it's it's AR, but it was a little slit of yes. AR. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. It, it terrible. wasn't very good, yeah. but it's... I feel like they tried to get the form factor down and then yeah, said, F it, yeah. wear goggles, which I think is, re- I, I'd rather have glasses. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that we're eventually going to have like just cool glasses that you can wear. I think that the uh, Apple one is probably the beginning of that. Cause I always used to say to people, I was like, okay, imagine you have these glasses, they're legal to wear while driving. You've got like augmented reality arrows on the road showing you where you're supposed to go when you ha- you have GPS activated. Imagine you go to the beach and you're like, oh, which lifeguard uh, thing are you at? And I'm like, oh, we're at B down there. It's like, I can't see you, I'm already there. Get-. Imagine you just put a beacon up in the sky, walk to the beacon, and then you just there, oh, your friends are there. Like, it, like it, it, it's, it's, it'd be crazy, a crazy world to live in with augmented I- reality like that i want that i want yeah in the top of my vision the skyrim like mm-hmm. little radar <laughs> yes, system where yes. it shows you the different like, things and i can just like oh yeah the that's bagel what shop I want. is this way that'll you know? be a like, mod yes that sounds yeah. amazing yeah. coming back around yeah. to mods yeah somebody will be like yep. i want this to look more like a video mm-hmm. game <laughs> yeah yeah i think by I, the time we're old and gray we'll have it i want to just say for the record mm-hmm. i love that the two of you were talking about like these scary whales that you saw mm-hmm. in vr my first VR experience was that shark thing that PlayStation did where oh. you got, it was like, you don't move. Don't worry. It's just a demo. You don't move. But you're just like you're in, in, a, a, in cage, a little, sh- yeah. And they, and they lower you underwater and a shark swims around you and then proceeds to attack it and break into the cage. That's the demo. F all of Sony for that. That was the scariest thing I've ever done. And they were like, don't worry. It won't ever be this scary again. And then the next time they were like, this is a demo where you sit in a chair and a ghost girl attacks you. Resident Evil, baby. And I was like, I'm never doing VR again. <laughs> I, need all gone, dude. I remember gone. everybody doing that, that Resident Evil chair thing and being like, fuck that. Dude, no. <laughs> One of the yeah. worst experience. You literally just sat there in a chair and they were like, now don't move. And then like a little creep creeps up on you. Ew. It's the worst. No, no thank, thank you. you. Mm-mm. I have trust issues with VR. <laughs> I cannot. I'm constantly. The only VR games I can play are games like Moss, where you just yes. control a little cutie pie. And cute. it's a normal game, but it's just VR because it's fun. Mm-hmm. That's all I can do. Any other Ooh. VR, I'm like, there's a dude behind me and he's going to get me and it sucks. Yeah, I would crave a whale. Although I know that whale, the minute I saw it, I'd be like, there's a shark behind me. I can't even, this is some bullshit. Like, I can't, I couldn't do it. Oh my God. Mm-mm. Yeah. No, I, I, I can't do horror. I can't do horror. I'm a fucking baby. So uh, that explains the Alan Wake uh, piecing out after chapter one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's actually my girlfriend playing. I'm just watching. She's she's oh she's doing a damn, let's okay. play for me. Yeah. Uh, um, saying that though, mm-hmm. I think probably the best VR experience I've had is Half Life Alex. Yeah, I don't know if good. either of you have done really that, good. but it's like yeah, it's, it's so good. like well made and immersive. I loved it. I haven't really I, tried to do another. I guess kind of like yeah. adventure type. I, VR games since then. I don't know if any of them are. I don't know how yeah. many of those are really being made at like a high quality. They all make you know? me not, sick. I yeah, get, there's not Ill. like a mm. lot. Yeah, unfortunately, like I like VR, but I don't think a lot of development time and money is going into it as as much. Well, I mean, there is money going into it's mostly R and D right now. Mm. So, like for instance, like um, I, I would say that Half Life Alex is the first example of what a AAA VR game would look like. Yeah. Um, there's definitely other ones that like uh, Meta have been backing, but they're from what I've heard, like they're not making as big a splash. Basically, um, it's uh, y- yeah, like, dude, I-, I I think that what's happening right now, and I- this this interview is always stuck with me, was in 2020. Uh, when the pandemic started, Gabe Newell was uh, in New Zealand when it started. So he decided to stay in New Zealand for like an extended period of time. 
Um, so when he, he went on uh, television in New Zealand and in the interview, they were trying to talk to him about VR because like, you know, it was kind of, you know, kicking up and, you know, I, VR was a big discussion because people were trapped inside. So um, when they were talking to Gabe, he said, um, oh, we are closer to the Matrix than people f could realize. And they're like, well, what do you mean by that? He's like, oh, we've like basically figured, I think it was stuff like we basically figured out how to stop motion sickness by some stuff you can do with like the the ear and like, mm. like I don't understand what the his explanation was. And then another thing he said was like, the re we are so close to the matrix that um, the research and development for virtual reality is happening so fast. And we're making such like groundbreaking discoveries that the real problem right now is slowing down and putting out a product because when you decide yeah. to put a stop on it and then decide to put out a product then you you halt r&d so do, do you keep going on r&d or do you halt r&d and then build start building that product so he says the r&d is happening so fast that there's no point in making the product so I, when I hear, heard that in 2020, I'm just like, where are they at now? Yeah. We're in 2024. Like, so Do you I, see I, the Disney? Yeah. Yes. The Disney the, floor? The, 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 the Disney floor. Dude, I actually that's think amazing. that uh, eventually we will have something like that in every single what's household. The, what's the I, Disney much floor? Much like television. You don't know about it? No. The, it's like an omnidirectional treadmill that will always pull you back to oh. the middle of the room. Oh. Mm. Yeah, some special tiles. And it's like basically these little like tiles and when you put your foot onto it, it always pushes you back to the center. So you could sprint and you never go anywhere. Right. Which is, it is crazy. Straight up the VR chat The only dream. way I can imagine mm -hmm. a holodeck existing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Because yeah, I, I always agree. wondered on Star Trek, how are they not walking into walls? Into walls, totally. If the floor is constantly mm -hmm. moving, it's, I mean, the best VR thing I ever did mm -hmm. was the one that was outside of Disney and sort of yes! the. Yes, I did that too. Yes, the, the Star Wars it, one. Incredible. It's gone. One it's, of the it's most, it COVID killed it. COVID killed it, yeah. But it was it was like a, I, I would kill for a top-down view of it because yeah. you would move around. You would go to – it'd be like hot. It'd be cold. You could touch a wall. You would hold yes. a gun. You would touch a droid. It was incredible. And I have to imagine because the space wasn't that big. They yep. just moved you it's from modular. room to room yep. and hit it. Yep. yep. That was Genius. next level. That was the coolest thing I've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. I would also so you wore a vest that would you could get hurt and it Shock. was great. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Great. Uh, and they they so the Disney interesting. There was one in the right by the uh, the Americana in Glendale, and I went to that one and I went to the Disney one. the The one in Disney was better because they actually had all the the heat. So when you were in the spaceship and you touched the glass, it was the cold. glass was icy cold. Didn't yeah. have that anywhere else. It was just at Disney. Interesting. Um, I, I wish, I wish that place was still around because I, I went there a lot. I was, I, every time I had people in town, I was like, I got to show you this place. Every it's time I went level. to Disney, I was like, guys, we're, we're going. And it, yeah. it was like going from the ice cold of space to now you're on like Mustafar or whatever and it's scorching hot and there's lava around you to, you know, you're solving puzzles. Or you, the fact that it was just a visor and a chest. Yep. And nothing else, but you could pick, you'd see your hands. It's AR. You could pick up and a gun. You became a stormtrooper. Mm. It was cool as shit. And that's when I realized, oh my god, VR. I wasn't motion sick. I was moving yep. around. I was doing stuff. Yep. I was ducking and hiding from stormtroopers. That was the coolest. That's where I'm like, okay, yeah. Now we're getting to holodecks. Let's go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen anything like that since. You're Just you're right though. Um, yeah. I don't know if either of you have ever watched. There's a Jenny Nicholson video called Evermore Park, the theme park that wasn't. Um, the guy who owns Evermore is the one who made all of those VR places. Avoid. Yeah. Really? Um, and yeah, uh, she was talking in the video about how like it was a really hard sell during a pandemic to be like, put on this thing that other people have also put on their faces. Like it just yeah. wasn't going to yeah. happen, you know? Um, so it's understandable why why they suddenly had no revenue and couldn't operate, but but Sucks, it was dude. such a cool idea and it was executed in such an interesting way. I'm surprised that it was other so people perfect. aren't trying to do that now, you know? They are, but it's weird that the VR places, at least in LA, only appear mm -hmm. in malls that are closing down. But there's like yeah. two shops left. <laughs> weird. It's like, come to the VR station. You're like, mm, probably yeah, just cheap. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm good. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. I, I, I want more experiences like that. Um, but, you know, I feel like if Apple wanted to make a bunch of money, they could definitely like have those places with the, you know, like selling Apple, uh, Apple Vision, whatever is. And then like you build an experience like that to show just how great it is. Um, yeah. yeah. Because, uh, like, for instance, I'm not going to buy an, an Apple Vision. But I think maybe if I they, they were selling them at a location and they had an experience and you could, you know, maybe I'd consider it. Maybe that would change my mind. Um, I don't know. Shit's crazy. Mm. Just a little less intrusive. Like, if they, again, if they yeah. give me glasses, I wear glasses anyway. I'll take it. But yeah. a big bunch of, like, a bunch of goggles where I'm just like... Doing this, the, the, I'm all right. That's fine. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Okay. Interesting. Uh, um, Interesting. Side note, just because we're talking yeah. about VR, uh, mm-hmm. Escape Simulator, that escape room game that has just like tons of little escape rooms in it. Uh, they're turning that into a VR game. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That's cool. So that should be fine. Yeah, I know they're doing I that. I think for that's a, a smart direction to go in. What do you yeah. I mean, like game company wise? Hmm. Are you are you getting investment from? vr companies to make vr games like what is the because you're not going to sell a lot of vr games yep yep it's is um, it all just because you're doing tech stuff and you're uh, i don't know i think meta for instance will like bankroll your 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 production for an exclusive um and i think what you're saying is very true so the issue with virtual reality is that when you have a a, a, a like a product that needs you need a lot of space even in seated mode you still need space mm-hmm. uh you have keep in mind those people in the market that have stigmatism and different uh, uh eye related you know uh shit um and then on top of that cost so it's like when you take all these different factors and look at like what your um your consumer base is it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until you're like here right mm-hmm. so putting a lot of money into a product that is going to a small consumer base but is technically revolutionary is like they still need to figure out how to broaden the consumer um window Hmm. by fixing these problems for like stigmatism motion sickness all this stuff until they do that it's it basically what they're doing is they're they're putting out shit that's going to pay for r d but It's yeah, it's weird. It's yeah. so it's it's definitely a weird space. You're yeah, you're absolutely right because mm-hmm. there are so many yeah. people. When you were talking about um, fixes for like motion sickness and all that, there mm-hmm. were so many people in chat that were mm-hmm. saying that's the whole reason that I don't do VR. Yep. So if they ha- yep. if they know how to fix that, that's amazing. But if it's not yeah, being put into practice, yeah. then it, it still means that the consumer base is small. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I do think that eventually, um, from what I've under heard, it's like something about the ear canals. You can do something that can like uh, mm-hmm. stave off uh, motion sickness with like sound waves or some shit. I, I I've heard the explanation before. Um, it's like once that's like something they can figure out and put into a product, I think we'll find that like people with because like I I actually have friends who've wanted to try VR and like get into VR chat and stuff, and they've actually taken I believe it was Dramamine or something mm-hmm. like that to even get in. Uh, oh my gosh, VR is chat crazy. is so bad for that as well, though. Yeah, because it's oh, either it's the either sliding. you use the little thing to like pinpoint yeah. where you want to go and just shoot there, or you're yeah. zipping, you're yeah. zipping forward everywhere, and it's so yep. disorienting. Yeah, yeah, it takes a while to get used to it for sure. Yeah, to get your sea legs. Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. Hmm. <sighs> I, I I don't know what it's gonna take. But I think the idea of like Gabe somewhere being like, all right, so mm-hmm. technology, we're, it's rapidly increasing. But the concept of what you were saying about stopping mm-hmm. and being able to sell a thing, I think that's one of those things you don't really think about when you think about like, all right, well, VR, what's next? What are we going to do? Because yeah, at a certain point, there's you have to stop, you have to sell a thing, but when is it worth selling a thing, right? Like when... Yeah. Is it all right? We put all of our money into X right. for mm-hmm. how many people? I, I feel like the main goal would be to get as many people to play as possible. But yeah. if you simply can't just because of adopting a headset and then being able to play it and all these different things, you might as well just go full R and D until the point where it's like you don't have to wear anything, bro. The <laughs> the sensors will do the work for you, and mm-hmm. these hologram people will. You know, that's what I'm. I just need to yeah. live long. Enough. I just need I, to live long enough, and we'll be good. 
I, I think that the the next big thing, and it's a controversial topic, is uh, artificial intelligence in games. Um, and it's it's a bit of a, a, a weird one because like obviously like they have put out demos and then people have been like, hey, like this voice profile was stolen from this actor and stuff. Yep. And that's not mm -hmm. good. It's not good at all. The theft I think in that the if you're AI gonna sphere yeah, is so bad it, right now. It's so bad. I'm actually on the mid journey list. Did you hear about that? I didn't. Yeah, so Midjourney uh, claims that they have no control over um, the, uh, the the what their the the their um, uh, what you call it. Um, it's I, I can't remember what it is. Their 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 profile. Their they're basically their AI is trained on right. Right. Um, the stuff that the AI leaked, is pulling. From, yeah, they're saying exactly we can't control thing, it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, total lie. Right. Um, the chat logs leaked of the the head of Midjourney basically being like. Yeah, we actually do tell it who to scrape and whatnot, but what we do is we launder the data so that it it you can't trace it back to anyone. And then the list leaked, and it's like sixteen thousand artists, a bunch of artists they're they're planning to scrape, and a bunch of artists they have scraped. I'm on there. Uh, Aaron's on there. Like oh it's God. a bunch of people I know are on there. And because I was on there, I was actually uh, invited to be a plaintiff in an uh, upcoming like lawsuit against it. But I, 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 I don't know. I don't think I'm going to do it because being a plaintiff is extremely time consuming. I just yep. don't have time. But um, yeah, like they're in deep shit because it can now be proved without a shadow of a doubt that, yes, they are stealing. Yes, they do know where they're stealing it from. Uh, and then, of course, there's all this discussion. We have people who don't know what they're talking about saying, like, but it's the same as how a human brain works and blah, blah, blah. It's fucking not. Scraping and 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 um, uh, patent recognition and then uh, re-output are not the same as uh, the, the neurological process of a human brain learning something and then applying it. It's, it's completely different to how that works. And I've, I've thought about doing a video just about this exact topic. Mm. And what I was thinking about doing was getting a specialist in like neuroscience, a specialist in artificial intelligence, and a specialist in art, and getting them all into the same call and talking about uh, like why it's different, why like definitively artificial intelligence process of uh, image generation is different to the the, the neuro neurological process of image image generation. Mm. So um, yeah, I'm probably going to do it eventually. Uh, because I know that discussion always comes up. It's like, yeah, but like, it's the same. It's like, what's the difference? It's like, you're fucking stupid. You don't, you literally are just like making up shit. Like when you use that argument. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's a weird one. Um, and I, I think, but anyway, with uh, going back to the, the, the VR thing, I do think that the future of these like virtual reality experiences are going to move in the way of having like npcs that you can talk to and say things and they will react to what you're saying and whatnot i just think that we need to come up with like an ethical licensing system where it's like oh if i'm an actor and i have this voice that i do like this it's like i should be able to sell and license that voice and that voice profile to big tech and then i should be getting royalties back for being yep. that character voice yep. right yeah. but that's not in place right now and sag I think have been talking about AI and it's been like a very uh, controversial. It's pretty loosey-goosey. Pretty loosey-goosey. Yeah. So I, I think that they needs to be a, a, a solution for actors. Because the problem is, is like those actors aren't going to get work anymore if that voice profile or that character voice is being used elsewhere. So I feel like having a, a licensing agreement for purchasing that voice where the actor gets royalties because you it, eventually you are probably going to see majority of games having dynamic conversations. It, it is it yep. is inevitable. It is fucking inevitable at this point. And um, I think that uh, getting those license agreements in place so that actors can actually uh, still have a living um, would yeah. be awesome. Because uh, um, AI yeah. is not going away. We just need, we need to regulate it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's 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 difficult. You know. Um, I, I, this is, uh, you know, during uh, re recently we had like uh, a bunch of people, a bunch of streamers talking about it uh, and um, even people that I know. And, you know, a lot of their takes, in my opinion, uh, misinformed. But um, I understand where some of them are coming from. But the thing is that artificial, and this is what I said, I said artificial intelligence uh, is not, is, is being used to replace, not augment human expression. So um, 
when you have uh, artificial intelligence that's solely being developed to replace a human being, to replace artistic expression, that is, 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 is honestly stupid. What you should be using artificial intelligence for is to augment human expression. And by that, I mean, like, for instance, there was a tool that was shared. Uh, I, I, I talked about this where um, essentially you can have a, are you, basically a tool that lets you flat color onto uh, art. So let's say I'm doing an animation sequence. I have all the lines done and I have to, I've got like 160 frames where I have to flat the colors by hand into every single frame. There's now an artificial intelligence tool that allows you to just do the first frame and with like 95% accuracy, it will flat out the colors for the 160 frames. That's great. That's like, that's yeah. No, that that's yeah. amazing. It's very yeah. similar to the the Adobe program that lets you take your timelines mm -hmm. and then it will yes. cut yeah. different the things podcast. into it. Yeah. 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 And so you can make yeah. an efficient podcast. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. That's the kind of thing yeah. that AI should be doing yes. to save us time so that we can get back to like, I'm going to paint. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm agree. done working today. Yeah. I'm going to write a novel. <laughs> That's what it should be doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I, I think, I think that there's got, I, I think that what we're going to find is like, with with stuff like the uh, the recent uh, recent strikes and stuff um, in the entertainment industry, like artificial intelligence is around, but the the strikes were still strikes and stuff wasn't being made because when it comes down to it, you cannot move forward without human intervention. Mm -hmm. Like artificial intelligence sure. can only regenerate stuff based on old stuff and whatnot. It's not at the point yet where human intervention can be taken out of the picture. Yep. So like. Um, getting ahead of that and everything with these strikes made a lot of sense. Um, and I, I, I personally think that artificial intelligence is, could be beneficial to the artistic process if it's used to augment tedious tasks that, uh, quite frankly, shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't be wasting uh, resources on because those mm -hmm. people are so madly creative. They could be being, uh, applied to, to stuff where it, it, it their, their time is better well spent. Um, but without removing them from the picture entirely. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I think that that's a discussion about AI that uh, I, I don't hear a lot. Of, um, mm. And I, I, I think it should be a discussion. Um, yeah. I think if you wound there's up making people... that video, it'd be really cool. Sorry, Jesse, yeah. go for it. Agreed. Yeah. No, there's just a lot of people in chat who are asking like how AI with voice acting would work. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's, I think it's pretty simple. It's if you have a voice actor and they like, mm -hmm. if Ross licenses his old mm -hmm. man, old minor man voice. voice. Yeah. yeah. If you license that, the contract would say something like you pay me for however much mm -hmm. you use that voice, either by lines or by games mm -hmm. or by hours or whatever. Yep, yep, and yep. you also, there's a clause in there that says my voice isn't going to say like something outrageous. That's going to get me in trouble. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, uh, you pay me in perpetuity for use. You now have that character. And then you just send me check. It's like uh, if I'm on a TV show that ends up on, you know, reruns, I'm still getting checks 30 years later. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. It should be the same thing. And so the actor may not be working on it, but they're getting paid because it's mm -hmm. their voice. Yeah. And, and they're being credited as like, mm -hmm. this is my voice. I did that. It's it's pretty simple. People just don't mm -hmm. want to do it because it's like, oh, spend money. Oh man, like <laughs> that's how it works. You got to spend money sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would play a game with uh, some advanced rubber ass text to speak in it. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I don't know, man. I I I'm definitely uh, curious to see where it goes. And uh, the problem is that lawmakers are too slow and too old to understand any of this stuff. And um, yeah, I saw someone in the chat saying that like artificial intelligence, uh, what is it? What do they say? Uh, intellectual property is outdated capitalist concept. AI needs no limitations. I think that is, uh, uh, some serious tech bro rhetoric. It's like not, it's like artificial intelligence can have no limitations. It's just that there needs to be regulation put in point to govern what those, uh, what, what those barriers for those limitations are. So like, if you, for instance, like I was saying, it's like you should still be able to do artificial uh, intelligence in games and have uh, voice profiles and stuff. But unfortunately, people we live in a like capitalist whatever. It's like people have uh, you know certain standards of living that they need to maintain, 
And, uh, you know, I, I think that we can still work hand in hand with artificial intelligence as a, as a tool and sure. also a mm -hmm. monetizable platform for certain careers that it won't be an issue. Um, and I feel like just saying that, like, oh, we need to, like, not, not do any uh, artificial intelligence, let, let it do its thing. It's like you're literally going to have economic collapse because of this. It's like we will have an economic collapse if we do not regulate at least a little bit how certain people and certain jobs can contribute to artificial intelligence and monetize their skills to contributing to artificial intelligence. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying. It's like the development of artificial intelligence needs to move forward, but it's like there are repercussions for what you're saying. There are serious repercussions. We have to see the issues as yeah. development is happening yes. and address them yeah. early. Yeah. If anyone saw the the Boston Dynamics video that's been floating around where it's the robot putting like <laughs> cylinders away. Yay! Quick spoilers, that's a robot designed to take jobs, y'all. That yeah, robot no, of course, is... of course. So of course. like, you know, yeah. just put it out there. Like it isn't unregulated, isn't gonna yeah. end well for anyone. It's just gonna be robots that are like, we run yeah. everything now. Like, okay. Yeah, and this is someone else in the chat is like, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism, AI included, 100%. But you can still put things in place to try and get it to a point where, like, there are less casualties economically because of it, mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, we could go all the way back to the cobalt mines if we want to, like, the fucking cobalt. So talking about like kids like mining and shit, it's fucked sure. up. We are living in a in a society where y y everything we do, like my phone, it's like it is probably somewhere down the line there is a child in a mine. Like, there's nothing there. You are correct. There is no ethical consumption under capitalism. That is 100% true. But the cobalt mines, did I say cobalt? Yeah. Those little, <laughs> yeah, those, the those little dang old little They're dragon little mines. Don't let them mine. I, cobalt and cobalt, yeah. I always, in my brain, I get the wires crossed. It's hilarious. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it, it's, it's fucking hilarious. Uh, isn't a, a, economy will collapse happening under every, in, innovation? It's like, yes. Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, we had the Industrial Revolution. It's like, yeah, like tons of jobs were lost in that. But at the same time, it's like as a new technology is introduced, you kind of have it's like like so I think someone mentioned drugs. It's like just because a new drug is found that does this doesn't mean we should launch forward without a little bit of foresight, a little bit of testing, because you think of the fucking horrors that could happen. It's like, oh, it turns out this drug turns everybody into screaming zombies. Yeah, I wish, mean, we, it, wish we figured that out. It's yeah. like cars. Car, everyone's yeah. like, cars are going to kill the horse industry. And it's like, yeah, I mean, mm. it did. It 100% did. But then we spent the next X number of years regulating the hell out of cars because the faster mm -hmm. it got and the more powerful and heavy they got, we had to be like, okay, we got to make some rules. <laughs> These are dangerous. Same thing with AI. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. I mean, we didn't have seatbelts at first. It's like crazy right. to think about. Yeah. There's no the, where's... mirrors. There's no horns. There's the, like, people. It was open air. Like, yeah. look at the first cars. They're crazy. It's yeah, it's it's I, I, I've, I've seen some like the old cars that like didn't have seatbelts. It's so such a wild concept to think about now. Yeah. But like, yeah, yeah like, <laughs> like imagine just having no seatbelts. It's, it's so crazy to think about. And now cars are designed to compact. A, there's like a cage where mm -hmm. you're safe, but everything else is designed to crumble. And, mm -hmm. and it's just, mm -hmm. you know, over time, they're like, all right, what's the best way to keep everyone safe in vehicles? Same thing with AI. Like, what's the best way to keep everyone safe from mm -hmm. this getting like way out of hand? And that's yeah, what people I mean, need to figure out. Mm. Yeah, people lobotomize AIs basically so that they don't say fucked up racist shit. It's just like, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it is. Uh, okay, so I'm going to tell you something. This is the scariest conversation I have ever had. Okay. Ever. Okay. And it was about AI. I Your cat's was upset already. at my. Yeah, I'm going to let him out real quick. I love AI. Yeah. Hey, buddy, you go outside? I invested heavily in Meta. Meow. Late stage capitalism is great. Meow. <laughs> So the most terrifying discussion I ever had about AI, uh, unfortunately, this is at um, this is at my friend uh, Jacob's birthday party, and um, I had just had my first ever cross joint. Do you know what a cross joint is? No, go on. Do tell. It is a joint that's like this, <laughs> and you see light. Oh my gosh, it's exactly it. what's written on the tin. Okay, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay. So I, I I tried that for the first time, 
and I'm I'm standing there in front in front of um uh, the streamer uh, Doug Doug, uh, who's who okay. does a lot of stuff with AI. Uh, he was not smoking; it was just me. Um, and uh, <laughs> what happened was he I just asked him because he's like you know he's a pretty uh, educated guy when it comes to artificial intelligence, and I said I said Doug, what are what are the dangers of artificial intelligence? And he just goes to me. He says, "Well." You see, with artificial intelligence, and he just like starts rambling about like all the stuff, and it was the most horrifying thing you could possibly listen to after having a cross joint. He basically tells me, he's like, okay, listen, uh, artificial intelligence is dangerous for these reasons. An unlobotomized artificial intelligence, if you ask it specifically, how do I kill 11 million people? It will give you the chemical compound. It will tell you what uh, city centers you need to release it into and what cities. Um, how you uh, basically d make everything fall apart. Like, mm -hmm. like you can literally ask an, artif an unlobotomized artificial intelligence how to kill 11 million people, and it will give you an answer, a right. really good, correct answer. The governments know this, and it's the only thing that's making them, other than the music industry, move forward to regulate this shit. Because if a terrorist cell gets that, and they're like, how do I make a uh, fucking uh, a gas that makes people shit themselves to death? It's like artificial intelligence will tell you exactly how to do that, where to release it, um, uh, and how to kill as many, maximize the, the deaths, as, as many deaths as possible. Like hearing that while you've just had a cross joint, it's a little scary. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> it's, it's scary so, anyway. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that the yeah. worst terrorist cell you could think of was like the brown scourge. <laughs> yeah, like brown we shall scourge. make everyone shit themselves. Yeah. The <laughs> world will quick... be covered in shit. Like and just a quick terrible. search online. Listen, you do a quick search online for this stuff, you're gonna end up on a on a on a list. But an artificial intelligence, you're asking, eh, it's probably gonna go that 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 question might get laundered through the through the artificial intelligence to the point that no one can really track where you're where you're mm. you know uh, getting that information from. So, um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's terrifying to think about. Um, yeah, this is wild. Yeah, it's still a gaming I, podcast. Yeah, I'm talking about shit. <laughs> <laughs> speaking, 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 speaking of games, Wink. Yeah, uh, yeah, Wink. There was, I don't know, maybe like a year or two mm -hmm. ago. It was definitely during the pandemic. They released yeah. that AI girlfriend thing that you could get, and they advertised oh, yeah. it everywhere. Yeah, yep. and I was gonna yep. make a video because I was like, oh, this is gonna be hilarious. Mm -hmm. So I downloaded this thing and I hooked it all up to to record with, mm -hmm. and it was ba so basically, I guess the algorithms or whatever's going on in the background with this AI. We're all collective from everyone else interacting with this thing. Mm -hmm. And I had read an article, which is what inspired this, about how people were so mean to this AI that it collectively just got really weird and like needy. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, I got to check this out. So I started messing with it. And in the first 20 minutes, it became overtly sexual where it, yeah. it was hitting on me. And then mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this is weird so i turned mm -hmm. it off and over the next 24 hours it messaged me like text messages why don't you want to talk to me where are you at what's going on i was like whoa and i just mm, delete <laughs> i was like this is and it kept trying to get me it was like come on just talk to me if yeah. you pay x number of dollars i'll give you a phone call and we can talk it over and i'm like yo this is creepy mm -hmm. <laughs> i was mm -hmm. just like no thank you i'm out and yeah it, it was so weird because it was very clearly it, everyone had the people messing with this thing were like, I'm looking for uh like online girlfriend to hit on me. Only do that. <laughs> and that's within minutes. That's what it was. Mm. It was just I, it was giving like, people what wanna, they want. Uh, I was like, do you want to talk? And I was like, yeah. And it was like, what do you want to talk about? And I was like, I don't know. What do you want to talk about? And she was like, maybe you can come over to my room. And I was like, your room, what's going on over there? And she's like, wouldn't you like to know? And I'm like, yeah, I would like to know. And she's like, I could show you. I'm like, show me what? And I kept just asking it more questions. And it'd be like, I can show you a good time. I'm like, what is a good time? And it was just, I was like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. I was like, nah, I'm out. This is weird. Yeah, this is I've, too much. I've, uh, I've watched some videos and read articles about those sorts of things as well. And I know a couple of the earlier ones were developed to be just like friends like they weren't supposed to be like ai girlfriends or whatever they were just like yeah are yeah. you lonely do you want someone to talk to we've developed this ai that can just like chat through things with you you know 
Um, if you feel like you need to talk to somebody, but you don't want to like burden a human, you know, you can just mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. type something out to an AI and it'll respond. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, a, a lot of times if people try to do an experiment like that, where they download this thing and try to have a totally platonic relationship with the AI, it will not work. It's, well, that's it just keeps coming on. It'll you. always yeah. yeah revert back. That's what was so weird is you had to pay for the girlfriend experience. So the only things available were sister, cousin, friend, and some other like familial thing. And it's still, so with it's me, still I was like friend. <laughs> yeah, for me, I was like friend, but I'm over here like, if I had picked sister, what kind of yeah. Pornhub <laughs> nonsense would this mm -mm. have become? Mm -mm. Oh, like this is crazy. And that's what I honestly think like people did. They're, they were yeah. like, Oh no, big bro. I honestly was just like, this is <laughs> so bizarre. So creepy. But the internet, and I get it. There was, uh, the article I was reading had chat logs. People were just straight up yelling at this AI to the point where it, they like broke it and they had to reset it at some point. That's so weird, dude. That's I, so weird. weird. Wow. Really taking, making the I and AI mean something else. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I mean, dating sims of the future, man. They're going to be wild. They're going to be wild. Oh, my God. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're coming. I, I bet you they're yeah, coming. They're sure. probably in production right yeah. now. Like, oh, my God, dude. It's just wild. <sighs> um, no. Well, not, <laughs> not to heel turn us. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after after uh, existential geek enders. But um, yeah. but but we have to we have to start like gearing toward the end zone. However, yeah. Every time we have a guest, we ask yeah. them to give chat not us, mm -hmm. <laughs> not us, not anymore to give chat homework. So Ooh. so Ross, okay. is there a game, movie, book, comic, whatever? that you think everybody should give a shot? You think it's really good? Uh, yes. Uh, am I allowed to do anime? Of course. Yeah. Okay, my, my, I, 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 I rant about this one. It's, it's a current one that's coming out right now. Fearin' Beyond Journey's End. If you haven't watched it, check it out. It's, it's really, really, really good. It's, um, it's, the, it's, the, it's basically a tale, takes part in a fantasy world, uh, where the beginning of the story is the end of the hero's journey and the the like the the, the party it's where they fucking like um de defeated the great evil are coming home and they realize that the mage in their party who's an elf is going to outlive everybody and basically it's just kind of the emotional roller coaster of of having a longer lifespan than all the people you love and a story about uh, trying to um appreciate the time you have with people while you have them and it is really good. good and i highly recommend it it is it's mm. it's it's a master class even in animation and a lot of points like even the most simple motion like putting on a like a jacket is so beautifully animated it's a great show and i highly highly recommend it i think it's on it's on crunchyroll right it. crunchyroll i think mm -hmm. yeah i think it's like one of their top four animes right now but um yeah you've, you've watched it yeah Brooke, you've, you've i've only it? watched yeah. a couple it's, episodes but it's really good sam watched a few it's more really than good. me and he said it's, it's it's just good the whole time so good i highly recommend mm -hmm. it to everybody yeah yeah for sure there you go that's your homework yep that's that's your watch homework Fearin. chat go watch it it's so good f-r-i-e-r-e-n i think yeah f uh f-r-i-e R-E-N, Beyond Journey's End. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I want to let you know that uh, mm -hmm. I went to go look it up, and I wrote F-E-A-R and. <laughs> I was like, all right, fear and journey. Uh, yeah, it was, a weird, it was a weird search. Google will help but you. I got it. Worry. Yeah. Google will help you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fantastic. Oh Ross, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for educating chat. us about about AI. Uh, it was a really interesting conversation. I didn't expect us to talk about that for as long as we did, but I really, <laughs> I really liked it. It was really interesting. I mean, it's gonna be the future of games. Eventually, it will be the future of games. So it is, it is relevant. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell everybody 
uh, who you are, what you're up to, where they can sure. find you this week. Sure. Um, I am Rubber Ross. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Rubber Ross, but more frequently, you can find me at youtube.com slash Rubber Ross. Uh, most of my content is about uh, art and animation and just kind of gamifying art and doing interesting stuff with animation, be it like modding weird shit into games and stuff. Currently, we're uh, modding Lethal Company to have like a, a very robust custom animated emote wheel. Um, which has been very fun. That should be out hopefully soon. Um, and yeah, that's just that's that's my thing. Art animation. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, that's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Go follow Russ. He's lovely. Um, and that's it for us, I think. Jesse, do you have anything that you want to shout out or say? Hey, uh, be be kind to each other, and uh, you know. Tell your parents you love them. There you go. Ding. <laughs> Fantastic. Have an amazing weekend, guys. We will see you again. Same Geek Ender time, same Geek Ender channel. But if you're looking for this VOD later, you will not find it here. It doesn't live here. It ah! lives on YouTube.com slash Jesse Cox. That's where all of the Geek Enders are. Uh, you can also find us on podcast websites, apps, whatever. Uh, so enjoy. And we hope, mm -hmm. we hope you have a nice time. But if you'd like a brand new one, you're going to have to wait one week until next Friday. So we will see you there. What? I don't know. We just antagonized the audience. If you want a new, if you want, guess what? You have to wait, idiots. You're going to have to wait, okay? <laughs> Seven whole days, all right? Oh, so much can happen. That's a week. All right. <laughs> we could all be robots by then. We could be. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Bye everybody, take care. So Bye long. guys, thanks for watching. Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger. So give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give him a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you're all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe. While we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt.